Hello everybody, this is XX Joshi here. This is a very special video because for the first time I get to actually show my viewers a look back at my childhood. Now, not only am I into, you know, PS4 or the new generation consoles, but from time to time I still play my old uh, retro consoles from like PlayStation, Genesis, GameCube, all that stuff. So here is my special Sega Genesis video game collection so why not start with the console itself now I have to thank my dad my dad was a huge gamer back in the day and so he kept all of his old systems so this is the original uh, Genesis box it has it has uh, joined the 16-bit revolution so you know it says on the back of the only Sega brings you these hot new additions as the Sega Minister, the Mega Fire, the Arcade Power Stick, and uh, so yeah, so this is the console box. Now, I used to have two Sen I used to have two Sega Genesis. Genesis. How you say Genesis in plural? Genesis. Anyway, so I had the first one was the original Sega Genesis. Then I had the other one that has like the multiple buttons on it and. But, and then I had another one called the Genesis 3, but you know, that was just a standalone system. But um, anyway, let's get to the game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off first with the games that don't have covers for them, which I'm very ashamed of because I really want to get all my games in covers with the instruction booklet and the case that came with it. So first, let's start off with Justice League Task Force. Uh, it's... I remember playing this game a whole lot. Uh, I would always pick The Flash because I was like my favorite superhero back then. And my dad, he would pick Batman or Superman. But it's your standalone uh, tournament fighter just featuring the Justice League. Uh, the main plot of the game is that uh, Darkseid has returned once again. And, he, and he's copying other heroes. It's like doppelgangers of them but they don't know which one is who so they fight they beat up each other to find out who's the real one so uh it's a relatively short game but just man it's okay if you want to check it out purchase it if you can find it anywhere uh i've been to a lot of flea markets and i have not seen this game i'm trying to look for a case for this so so that's justice league task force vector man uh, I think Vector Man was one. It was trying to be a franchise of his own. Uh, it was trying to market him, kind of like Bugsby. You know, he had mo he was on multiple systems and multiple games, but he never we, really, you know, caught on with the fans. Not like Sonic or Mario did. But Vector Man, it's a really hard game. This, but it was actually very successful. They actually made it on the Mega Hit series. Uh, it's very difficult. Um, I played it before numerous times, and I can only get past the fourth stage. After that, the game is just way too hard. But I'm very glad I still have one of these games in my Sega library. So next, we have oh, Superman. You know, they really didn't do a lot of good job of um, you know numbering the series. I don't know what it is about Superman. He just if, you know, Superman stands for excellence and superhuman ability, but Superman on, on video games just spells garbage and desperation and depression. Uh, this one is about him trying to defeat Brainiac. Um, it's a really, really difficult game. Like, the game starts to get difficult at the first stage of the game. And then... You know, Superman, he has multiple superpowers, like, you know, heat vision, you know, super strength, able to, you know, x-ray vision, able to look through Lois Lane's clothes every single day. Mm hmm oh, oh, Lois, she's looking very nice today. How'd you know? Anyway, so, whenever you get your first superpower, it's, you see the super, like, you get this one big super punch, but you use it only once. And then, throughout the game, it's kind of get a point where it's like a puzzle feature, where in order, you have to use certain powers at different times for you to progress. If you choose the wrong power, you might be stuck with it and you're unable to go back. And if you turn off your system, well, you'll just start the whole system all over again. So, I don't know, not the best Superman game, but, but honestly, what is one of the best Superman games ever? So, 
like I said, I've been to a lot of, you know, flea markets and video game retail stores and I've never seen another copy of Superman. So, you know, I guess it's okay that say I have Superman in my library, but it's not an achievement. Eastwatch City Under Siege. This game was released in 1990. Uh, one of those side scroller shoot 'em ups. You're a cop. I feel like this is just like a cheap knockoff of RoboCop because the series goes, you're a cop, and then you somehow get hurt or injured, and then they reboot you, and then they make you into this big super mecha robot that you can fly, you can shoot missiles and as the game progresses you get more weapons uh my father is the only one who, who's ever beaten this game like in my house or like i've gotten close to the boss and i always lose but somehow he finds a way to beat him i don't know how he does it i feel like my dad's better at retro gaming than he is in the new era of games i can never beat the old ones i guess because he's so used to it but uh i almost just said robocop east wide city under siege Great underrated classic for the Sega Genesis library. He's on fire! NBA Jam on Sega Genesis. Boy oh boy have I had so many memories with this playing like my cousins and my uncle. I'll always pick the Detroit Pistons because you know Dennis Robin, he was just like a monster and then I'll pick Isaiah Thomas, he would just shoot, he was faster than anybody on the court. But kind of like the stepson to the arcade version. Obviously, you know, with a cartridge, is not able to hold the certain amount of RAM it needed to replicate um, the amount of, how should I put this? The same the amount of input you get from an arcade system, you, you can't get it on a cartridge. But uh, I guess it did its best to try to recreate all the magic you got at the arcade system, but on your home console in Sega Genesis. But it's a very great game. I'll pop this thing in anytime and play it. There's been many reboots of NBA Jam. There was NBA Jam Extreme. There was the NBA Jam uh, Tournament Edition. Um, I think one of them you could play as Mortal um, any Mortal Kombat characters like Sub Zero or Scorpion, but I don't know which one. And then later on, I think in the 2010s, there was NBA Jam. I think the Gold Edition. I don't know something like that. But they just put instead of you know old characters like Scottie Pippen or you know Isaiah Thomas they had Dwight Howard and LeBron James but a uh, great game great in, uh, one of the best basketball games ever made NBA Jam if you don't have it check it out buy it you won't be disappointed he's on fire anyway so let me see I don't want to get confused I want to say the same thing Ultra Beast I think this is one of the, uh, not not the day one releases, but one of the main titles for the Sega Genesis. Uh, as you, Me and my father used to play this game so much. I cannot tell you how many times me and my dad have played Ultra Beast. Uh, and we, all, we, we would beat the game easily. We would just run through it easily. Because, you know, with two characters, it's really easy. You know, it's just... A great game you know getting to play as like a werewolf or like a dragon uh, great great Sega Genesis classic they tried um there was another one on uh, the, the Game Boy SP that one's really difficult and then they uh, I read in tips and tricks magazine that was going to be a release on PS2 but it never came to fruition for some odd reason I don't know but if you can find Ultra Beast by great class, great Sega Genesis class. The Avengers, Captain America: The Avengers. Now, there may be some confusion about this. There were multiple games about Captain America: The Avengers. There was also there's one on, on the NES. It was the Captain America: The Avengers, but you can only play as Hawkeye and I mean Hawkeye and Captain America. Vision and Iron Man were, were 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 captured, knocked upside the head, you know, and they were captured. So you had to go find them. And then there was also one. This is this this is the side scroller uh, one where you play as all four of them, and you try to fight, you know, defeat the Red Skull. Game is awesome. Uh, made by Daddy East USA. I don't remember what year. 
1992. I wasn't even born yet, but my dad was. He used to play it all the time in college with his roommates, and he will always beat the game. But whenever I was born and tried to play with him, I could never beat it. We got to almost the second to last mission, and that was Ultron. And then we always died because we were running out of so many lives before we get to that part. And it was too difficult. But great games, shared a lot of memories with this when I was a kid. Uh, great game. If you can find the game, get it, play it. You will enjoy it. Absolutely. Ranger X. You are a sort of like a, um, a mix between Transformers and a Megazoid from you know power rangers but you can transform to either like a like a, a vehicle like drive like a like a car that shoots out missiles or you can or you can transform to this big mecha you know fighting robot a great um great game are very underrated uh, it's very tough so if you're going to play the game expect to die a whole lot I'm, i guarantee you'll start dying by the second level because the game gets really repetitive and really hard Saying a lot of very, that's what she said, moments, words right now. But the game is very hard. So uh, if you can find the game, or I'm mean, saying a lot. Great, if, please go out, try to find this game. The game is great. It's underrated classic, very overlooked. But you know, it's, yeah. Sonic. The Hedgehog, the original one, not for resale. I think this is one of the day one systems. I think this is the main reason what got people to buy a Sega Genesis was because Sonic. What can you say about Sonic, the Hedgehog? The man is the shit. I cannot, Sonic is the shit. Like. The first level, Green Hill Zone, is one of the most memorable levels ever in video game history. Sonic is faster than anything. This game introduced us to a whole, you know, universe full of characters from Dr. Robotnik, who will later be changed to Dr. Eggman and Sonic the Hedgehog, and then after Sonic 2, Tails and Knuckles and Shadow, and just a great game, great, awesome game. I still play this game till today. Game is very hard. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna lie about that. The game is very tough, but it's great. I've only got to like I think the fifth level, then I just die because the game is just too hard. There have been many many games about Sonic, Sonic Riders. There have also been like a um, kind of like Mario Party, but featuring Sonic characters. I think that was on a Sega Dreamcast, but. Great game, please find it. You can find it anywhere. You can download it on your computer. You can probably find it on your iOS device or any anyone. I played this one time on a Game Gear because my cousin let me play it and uh, not the same as playing on a Sega Genesis, but Sega, Sonic the Hedgehog, Two in Heaven, great game. All right, now we're gonna get into the games that I have cases for. But they're not in the best condition. X Men Two Clone Wars. Does you know? Does that ring Steven Spielberg? Hmm. I don't know. But look at the cover. You know, you got Magneto, and then you got you know Wolverine like poke, about to poke somebody. You got Gambit, and on the back it says double action when X face their duplicates. X-Men engage in a battle so world-threatening, even Magneto switches sides. Mutant kind races to the edge of oblivion at the hands of an evil techno-bio-cloning organism, the Phalanx. B. Wolverine, Cyclops, Gambit, Nightcrawler, B. Psylocke, and for the first time ever, play as Magneto. X-Men are, are their fiercest with Cyclops, Optic Blast, Wolverine, Slashing, Antimidium Claws, and Gambit's hypercharged cars, cards. Use each mutant superpower attack to defend the world. I have spent many hours, many days, playing the hell out of this game. This game is so awesome. If you check inside, you know, got the game. You also got the instruction booklet. 
In the back, it has Fantasy Star 4 as a, like a promo. But with a lot of these games, like I can tell you right now, I only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. About seven cases out of the whole amount of game library I have. Now I'm very ashamed of that because I feel like these these games, you know, they should have a home, they should have the case, and they should have a booklet with them. I feel very ashamed about that. So, great game. Like I said, you can play as Psylocke, Wolverine, uh, Cyclops, Nightcrawler, Beast, and Magneto. I've always played as either uh, Cyclops or Magneto. But you don't get to play as Magneto until I think the fifth level. No, the fourth level. Because then he's like evil and you have to turn him good or just make him be on your side. And then he's pretty easy. Because Magneto and Cyclops are one of the best characters in the game because they don't even got a punch on They just shoot the whole time. The graphics on this game are amazing for it. It's time to be on the Sega Genesis uh, console. The music is great. The gameplay is great. The game is hard as fossilized shit this game is hard don't be mistaken by that even with two players me and my dad tried to play it and it was way too hard once we got to i think the six levels i felt like a rat in a maze because you know i didn't know where to go there's no you know map system so but oh i almost got another character that was really good but i think the the developers of the game didn't really use him to his full potential i feel like nightcrawler could have been arguably the best character in the game but I feel like they didn't really use it to its full potential like they should have. And also, I have to note that this is one of the games, you know how in normal games, you know, you start the game, it says press start, they give you like a little intro about the game. No, this one, as soon as you put your Sega, as soon as you put the game inside your Sega Genesis and you press power, you automatically start the game. No warning, you just start and, and, they, and they don't give you like a, a character select. They just randomly give you somebody. So on Monday you play the game, you start, you'll get Psylocke, and then Tuesday you'll probably get, you know, Wolverine or Gambit. So very unorthodox to start a game. Just like forget trying to ease the player into the game, and they just throw you to the wolves are right there. So great game, great game. If you're a 90s baby and you tell me that you never watched Power Rangers or never was a fan, you are a liar. You are a liar. This is the one on Sega Genesis based on the movie, The Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, not the one on the Super Nintendo which came earlier. This one, uh, it follows season one going on to season two. Wait. Season like towards the end of season two, going on to season three, because that's when uh, Zach, Jason, and also oh my god, this is yeah Zach, Jason, and Trini. Well, I forgot their names, but the Yellow Ranger, the Black Ranger, and the Red Ranger got replaced by the new ones, and um. And it also follows the movie very well. I'm not gonna go through the plot of the movie because that's a whole nother video. But great game. Uh, the boxes, <sighs> been through some things. I, I can already tell you about this. When I was a kid, I had this this thing that I would chew on on the box at the end of the box. Because you can tell, like, look at the box, it's like all chewed up. That was my fault, I don't know why I did that. <clears throat> oh, excuse me, but yeah, it follows the movie very well. It hits all the main points. Here's the game, the case for it, the game. Also the instruction booklet. And once again, promoting VR Troopers. That game, that movie, well, that show sucked the big one. I don't think it really never caught on with a lot of viewers. They were so used to freaking Power Rangers, but great game. I'll always choose I will, at the first, I would choose Zack because that was my favorite, you know, Ranger, you know, the Black Ranger. And then I think I would choose, now this is not gay, but I would choose the Pink Ranger because she had the arrow. And I had to fight everybody close to close. I could just shoot everybody from afar. But great game. It has a lot of variety to it because some levels you play as a Power Ranger and other levels you get to play as a Megazord itself. So I was like, man, I get to play as Tommy. Tommy's, you know, the White Hawk, you know. Oh, oh, great. Oh, my God, this is awesome. So, 
Great game. Excellent game. Try it out. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a spider can. Spider-Man and Venom, Separation Anxiety. This is actually a sequel to, if I can find the game. Oh. Now, I know it's the Sega Genesis collection video, but I got to tell you. This, Separation Anxiety, is a sequel to Spider-Man and Venom. Maximum Carnage. This is the second game of the Spider-Man and Venom series. This is a whole nother video coming along, but I just gotta tell you, this is Separation Anxiety is a successor to Spider-Man and Venom Maximum Carnage. So after you beat the first Maximum Carnage game, he comes back, but this time there's like four other symbiotes that you gotta fight with. So, as if Carnage wasn't enough, you know, it took an entire game just to defeat one character. Now you gotta defeat four other motherfuckers, including Carnage. So, here's the case it comes inside with it. Got the booklet, got the game. Another promo. If I can get this thing in here. Okay, there we go. Parting is such sweet sorrow. Venom has been violently split from his living costume. Spawning five deadly alien symbiotes in fierce two-player action, Venom joins forces with his arch enemy Spider-Man to face the new strand of evil brought to life by chilling computer rendering graphics between the merciless jury and awesome aliens like Ghost Rider and Daredevil. Venom's out to part his symbiote offspring from their newfound life. What does that mean? Spider-Man and Venom go out the game trying to find Venom's other symbiotes. In a nutshell. It plays exactly like Maximum Carnage except for the, the graphics are prettied up a little bit more since, you know, the Sega Genesis is 16-bit and the Super NES is not the part. But at the time, it's either you had a Super NES or a Sega Genesis. It's like you had a Ferrari or you had a Bugatti. Either way, you're still balling. So, uh, the jury believes in capital punishment. That's one of the five times the carnage. Venom and Spider-Man bury the diggers. Smashing two heads is better than one. No sympathy for the symbiote. Oh, <laughs> Oh, the verdict is no mercy. Web of confusion. So I think the game was released, if I'm not mistaken, 1995. So this is around the time that the Spider-Man series, great series, I used to watch that show all the time when I was a kid. Um, let me get back to the game. Great game, great side scroller. Better to play it with two characters, makes the game much more easier. I prefer playing with Venom, I guess he's more stronger, but Spider-Man gets around quicker in the levels, but he gets beats up a lot. But play the game with two players makes the game very fun, very easier to play. Playing by yourself, you're not going to win the game. I mean, unless you're really good, we have a great night where everything goes your way, where you, you save all the superheroes at the top of the icon screen, you can use them. Great game. We have the original X-Men on Sega Genesis. So, the precursor, sequel. This one came out in 1993 around the time of the X-Men animated series, Magneto's Makes His Move. So once again, like a typical plot, the X-Men are trying to defeat Magneto from trying to pull out this extravagant you know, plot to kill man and raise the mutants as his own. Very difficult game. By the way, you only play as four, you know, X-Men characters, Wolverine, Gambit, Cyclops, and Nightcrawler, which is really dumb. Like, out of all the X-Men characters that's in, you know, X-Men itself, you got Kitty Pride, Colossus, you know, all the other characters, you only pick 
Nightcrawler, Cyclops, Gambit, and Wolverine. You're leaving out a whole roster full of characters that, that you could be. But Storm, Iceman, Archangel, and Jean Grey, and Rogue are in the game, but they're only to help. And you can only use them about a couple times, and then you can't use them no more. Uh, special edition poster comes inside and includes maps and hints. I don't see any posters inside. I probably threw it away, or my dad probably threw it away. Here's the game itself, and also here's the instruction booklet. If I can get it out, look at this. Remember when I told you I used to chew the ends off the the instruction manual? I don't know what was I don't know what possessed me to do that. Great game, a uh, very awesome game, very like uh, one of the best Sega Genesis games ever. It's just hard as ever. One of the hardest games ever. It, like, it's unforgiving. Like, trying to defeat Juggernaut in the jungle level is, is difficult. You need two players. Like, they should have put on the back of it, Magneto makes it move, and also, you need two players. And I think this is the game where I think at stage number eight, when you fight Mojo, and then you... You know, you beat Mojo, and then there's like a little big floating computer chip, and that you destroy it, and you're just left there walking backwards like a dumbass, and you're like, well, what am I supposed to do now? Well, it wasn't until later on that players figured out that when you defeat Mojo and defeat the chip, you're supposed to press the reset button on your Genesis. And you can't press it hard. If you press it too hard, you'll just reset the game. But if you press it just a little bit enough, it'll... Like like the matrix slips, some green uh, numbers will come up and then you advance to the level. One of the most cryptic moments ever in video game history. And if that wasn't bad enough, if you had a Sega Game Gear and you was on the road, there's no reset button on the Sega Game Gear. So you have to turn your system off. Once you get to the last level, well, second to last level before you fight Magneto, you have to turn your game up because you couldn't advance. Why did they put that in there? I don't know. I guess the developers like, hmm, 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 hmm. We'll never get to second to last level, you know. Guess what, man? Uh, we're gonna put like a little part in there where they get to reset their Genesis. Well, what if they're on a the second Game Gear? Who cares? <laughs> Great game, awesome, awesome, awesome game. Wolverine Antimanium Rage. Unbreakable, unstoppable, uncontrollable. It's Wolverine in Antimedium Rage. Armed with an arsenal of slashing combat moves, the Lone X-Men battles his way from the Weapon X lab to sewers of, to New York City, searching for clues for his mysterious past and the most dangerous adventure of his life. But remember, bub, he's the best at what he does. Nuff said. Now, if you were buying the game, I don't know, back in 1994, you read it like, man, this game is awesome. As soon as you put this thing in your system, you would know how crappy and how difficult this game is. It took me about three hours just to maneuver past the first level. I've never seen any other part of the whole level of, I've never seen any other, other part of the game. I've been stuck on the first level of Wolverine Antimatter Rage for about the majority of my life. The only time I've ever seen other parts of the game is if I go on YouTube or if I look on the back of the book and this in the back of the case and it's teasing me of what I'm supposed to go, but you never get this far. The controls are weird. All the enemies are faster and stronger than you. And that, and that wasn't bad enough. There's this little girl named LCD. Now, if... Let me look to the book find this girl hold on there she is LCD right there see her she will follow you through the entire game and let's just say you know you get to a part where there's no enemies or you don't do anything and you just have to go to the bathroom real quick well there's a meter at the top of your screen and it shows you how far she is to getting close to you when she gets close to you, you die. You automatically dead. You're not coming back. Flatline. Er, you're dead. And then, like, you're on your last life, and then she kills you. You're dead. 
Wolverine has been ripped apart by the Incredible Hulk. Ripped. Like, torso, like, ah! Ripped apart by the Hulk. But this little girl, this little android, just touches him. And he's dead. Makes Wolverine look like a punk. Look like a soft cupcake. I mean, damn. Like, why they make him like a punk in this game? This game is terrible. Like I said, the controls are terrible. Trying to jump off the cliff is is about as difficult as trying to, you know, it's like rocket science. Like, it shouldn't be that hard. It's Wolverine, man. But, anyway, next game. Doc Bruce Banner, tilted by Gamma Rays, turns into the Hulk. If you don't know where I sung that from, that is from the original Marvel Comics TV show back in the day. I'll tell you, I'm a geek. I'm nerdy. I know myself. Let me look at like look at my room. Like, well, this is actually room. This is one of my guest rooms, but look, look at all this. Look at all that. Anyway, let's get back to the game. The Incredible Hulk. Developed by US Gold. I think it's 1993. No, 94. Great game. What am I talking about? Yeah, the game is awesome. It's got some points where it gets to a puzzle, and the game actually allows you to play as Bruce Banner. But who wants to play as Bruce Banner? No, I want to be the Hulk. I want to, you know, rip things. You know, I want to go like. You know, I want to be the Hulk. I don't want to be wimpy Bruce Banner. And if you, there's a parts of the game where in order to access others or goods or you have to play as Bruce Banner so there's this meter at the top and if you keep getting hurt you'll turn into Bruce Banner and one time I I kept getting hit right before you face you know the abomination and I turned into Bruce Banner right in front of the abomination and you, whenever you play as Bruce Banner, you get this wimpy little gun that has like five bullets. And once you runs out of that, you might as well just cut the game off or just press quit or reset because you're not going to beat the, abom the abomination with Bruce Banner. Like, I'm pretty sure when you, when you turn to Bruce Banner, the, the game should just turn off. But that's not fair because there's ways you can turn back into the Incredible Hulk. If you get these little, these green and purple pills... They can turn them back into Bruce Banner. I guess it's like steroids, you know. But anyway, but great game. Now, last game. Now, don't be mad. Don't be laughing about this. This is the first game I've ever played ever in my life. What a hell of a lot of game to start with. I love you. You love me. Let's be... Oh, I forgot the theme song. Oh, my God, but... Barney Hide and Go Seek game on Sega Genesis. I think it's like 1993, I suspect. Yep, 1993. Barney is it in a super de duper adventure. He searches for four friends and Baby Bob on the farm underwater through the playful scenes. Children will love the discovery of what they find in Barney. This was, like I said, the first game I've ever played. And it's Barney. So what what else can you say about Barney? It's just you don't die. You can't die in this game at all. You can try to jump off the cliff, but he will like he'll stop you and say, no, you don't jump off cliffs. Like, what gay character tells you you can't jump off a cliff? Like, that would be equivalent of me going to play in GTA 5. And, like, right as I'm jumping off the building, he'll say, You know what? I'm not going to jump off that build. No. Or, like, if I'm pointing a gun at somebody about shooting, me, like, I'm not supposed to kill anybody. That's wrong. You don't do that. It's, I've never heard of a video game character who didn't want to do what the player wanted to do but great game this set the bar for the games i'll play like like i'm now i'm playing freaking 
mad at 15 and then but i remember like just a couple of weeks ago or when i was born when i was getting older i was playing barney so that's it that's my sega genesis collection great console it set the bar for games to come i really wish sega would release another game console they haven't released one since the second dreamcast and that was way back in 1999 times have changed there needs to be another second Genesis console. I think I'm missing another game. Hold on. I think so. If I could. Oh my god. Jack Fu. Oh, <laughs> I can't believe I have this game. I still have it. Okay, so let me get into the story about this. Okay, so I was at my grandparents' house at the time, and my uncle, uh, he was a big gamer. My whole family is just based on gamers. Like, they all play games. So my uncle was playing this, and I think he left it underneath his bed. And as he got older, he stopped playing Sega Genesis, got to PlayStation. And I was still in my Sega Genesis Super NES era of my games, because I was still a little kid. And I kept it home and I played it. And I, at the time, I didn't know who Shaquille O'Neal was, let alone Shaq Fu. And boy, oh boy, when I played this game when I got home, I was disappointed. I felt like I just picked on a retard. like. I was very upset. And then to come to find out, I didn't play it for a little while. But as the game got older and times went on, I found out that there's a site dedicated to destroying every single cartridge of this game. And I was like, man, like, it was even produced, not produced, but developed by Electronic Arts. EA made Shaq Fu. Like, when you think of EA, you think, you know, Need for Speed, Battlefield, other great games, but deep in the bowels of any of EA's, you know, game dark garbage dump, way back in the corner, you see Shaq Fu. This game should be destroyed. This game is an abomination to games everywhere. And the fact that I have this as in my Sega Genesis collection is nothing but a tumor in the Sega Genesis library. Anyway, thank you all for watching. This is my Sega Genesis collection. Uh, I will do more of these. I will get to Super NES and PlayStation and so on. So expect more. Give me your thoughts. What is your favorite Sega Genesis collection? What is your favorite game? What games do you have that you think are pieces of shit? I want to know. Like it up, comment, rate, subscribe, and thank y'all for watching.